Okay. <laughs> no, no, wor no worries, Monica. We, qu we can repeat that. <laughs> No, no problem at all. We, we just we just stop for one minute, so it's not that that dramatic. <laughs> okay, Monica, thank you, thank you very much. And again, <laughs> thank you very much for for well, letting me uh, share my thoughts in the I Make Force community on Twitter. And thank you very much for for uh, this interview, or well, this kind of interview or Q and A. Let's see how how it goes. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. Oh, well, okay. Um, well, uh, right now I am working as a university lecturer. I, I'm teaching uh, video game development and also programming. Okay. And I also try to run my own startup that is Riley mm. Technology, where I use uh, Riley and and several other technologies, open source that I, I created to create a small a small tools uh, intended for um, data processing in the in video games like textures, uh, audio, yeah, that, that kind of. Okay, of that's fantastic, and just and thankfully we still. <sighs> all right, so we can hear all of us now. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, that that is so. It seems like you really keep yourself busy. And so, how you mentioned your uh, that you've been an educator, which is awesome. Uh, is um, I think that there's a lot of us in open source who've either been in the classroom or we've been teaching in some other kind of way. So, what kind of teaching have you done? Uh, well, uh, actually, I've been teaching for the last uh, eight years or, or, or so, uh, t teaching kind of uh, full time. Mm -hmm. But uh, from time to time, I stop because uh, I try to run uh, several startups, uh, creating uh, mostly video games that. <laughs> Uh, I, I actually, to the to, to that moment, none of them work. They don't work yet. I, I really had a lot of fun doing that, and and I learned a lot, a lot in the in the process. So it, it was it was fun. And uh, the last one, it's it's really technologies. Uh, just. I just created that after creating an open source uh, library that is Rayleigh, that it was created originally for, for teaching, for education, but after a lot of time working on that library and growing it a lot, uh, I decided to try to use it for something else uh, other than just education and was a bit the origin of, of, of that last project. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, 
That, that's it. I, I, actually, I, I, I've been, last year, I was the full year working, I, I, I quit teaching, and I was one year for a full year working on, on Riley Technologies. Actually, I, I, I developed uh, seven tools on that time, and, and I published all, all those tools. And uh, like about six months ago, well, no, actually it was, uh, well. Yeah. 2020 <laughs> time is really <laughs> weird. It's like six months, a year. Yeah, yeah, because th this year has been a bit crazy. Yeah. Y you, well, you know. So, but I I've been for more than a year now uh, teaching again as a lecturer in the university. Um, last no, I started not this November, but last November, teaching only some hours. And from this uh, September, I've been working. Well, I, I almost full time. I, I wow. Actually, that's a bit the reason because I, I didn't have that much time to put into uh, Rayleigh or Rayleigh technology tools because teaching takes a lot of time. <laughs> oh my gosh! As someone who is a former uh, university instructor, yeah, especially grading and coming up with oh. things, it's so exhausting. And I think that that's uh, an issue a lot of uh, a lot of people who make FOSS, you know, face that not many of us get to do this for our full-time or even part-time job. We're doing this just because we love doing this and we know people use our tools and we're doing it in our spare time and sometimes like you said our spare time kind of vanishes and it is and it is hard to kind of just keep going with it that but it sounds like you all have a pretty good co community going that's also it seems like it's a pretty good amount of people who uh you were mentioning about your discord channel and so hi to to anyone from there and how many people do do you have on that well uh, well the discord community has grown exponentially well i, I actually in the in general in the last i've been working in really for seven years now actually uh, this this november it was the seventh year since first release and um, in the last two years uh, the community and the people using Relief seems to have grown exponentially, really exponentially. And I think it was one year ago or, or something like that, that I got maybe 500 people in this course, something like that. And now I'm about to reach, uh, well, it's about 2,700, something like that. That's a good um, amount of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of people, but actually, I must say, I must say that this year with the with the lockdown and all that, mm -hmm. uh, I, I be, I've been teaching from home online mostly, mm -hmm. uh, so I had more time because I, I didn't have to commute and I actually had more time, and I also put a lot more time into the Riley community. I'm usually in, in the in the Discord every day. I, I won't say every hour, but <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you you still want to have like the work project life divide there. So, sorry. You still want to have like that divide between work and life, and yeah, then your yeah, yeah, and then yeah, your yeah. open source projects. So that's okay. You shouldn't yeah, yeah. be in the Discord. 24-7. You, you, you have to do that, but uh, I don't know. It, it, it becomes quite addictive, the, this kind of social network. Because it, it's, okay, let's see if, if I can help someone or someone is asking something, or maybe in the showcase, someone is showing uh, some news. Um, yeah, you, you really engage a lot with the, with the community. Because mm -hmm. I don't know, you feel that they are interested in something that you have created. Um, uh, they, they, well, there are a lot of contributors right now in, in Relief. So yeah, it's, 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 very, it's very engaging. And, <laughs> and consequently, it takes you a lot of time. <laughs> it does, but I found that, you know, especially since some of us, we 
are in-person networks, it's a lot harder to get together with them. And so I found that, oh my gosh, I'm on so many more Discord servers and Telegram rooms and Slacks. It's just like, wow. It's like I've added quite a few of those. And it's just, and especially when it's people who, you know, want to share what they made with a tool that you've created and they're helping contribute to you're right you you want to kind of stay on to see it's like well what are they going to do next and so I think that Mm -hmm. sense of even though we all want to go back to meeting in person and having in-person conferences and it's going to be great when that happens I think since we're we were so used to being online that it really those communities that we've built have been really important this past year so yeah yeah, i completely agree yeah well uh why don't you go ahead and show us some of what rylib is oh yeah 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 (laughs) i don't know if the the audience is aware or not Uh, okay so yeah let me share the screen. So. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. No worries. So, can, can you see? Oh, All right, okay. I'm <laughs> seeing that it's starting. Woo! Infinite yeah, big okay. blue button. So, hopefully, you, now you can you can see. Yes. The, the, the can see it well, quite that's, well. That's the, the, that's the main web page for the for the library. I. Uh, as I as I did with the with the library itself, I always try to keep things kind simple. So it's quite quite simple and descriptive. It describes how the library. Like really it's a it's a simple and easy to use library to to enjoy video games programming, but also it can be used for more than video games. It can be used for uh, tools, for graphics, for small demos. Well, it's it's a graphics library we, we could say. Um, Things to note about the library. Well, we will see some example later on because mm-hmm. it's quite. It, it was originally intended for students, but not uh, programming students, but art art students. That was the origin of the library. So okay. I tried to make it very very simple in the in the syntax with very simple and clear instructions to do things like init window, uh, draw rectangle. Uh, check if escape press. So I think that's one of the that of the um, key features of the of, of Rayleigh that it's very simple and, and enjoyable to use. Really, it's not intended to be a big library to create big games or <laughs> to create big things. Actually, it's more intended to just for that to have uh, some time of of coding that enjoy coding for a couple of hours, create something visual in an easy way. And that's it. But but then you, you see the forums and people is creating <laughs> incredible things <laughs> with, the, with the library. Uh, yeah. About it, uh, well, it supports lots of platforms. It supports I see. Linux, Mac, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, people is porting the library to, to new platforms every day actually lately this year i've seen it uh, running in ps4 running in Nintendo wow PS2. so people, it's <laughs> that's amazing. incredible yeah but but actually one of the important well another key feature of the library is that it keeps the dependencies to the minimum and self-contained into the, the library so it's really really high portable so you got a package that it's a bunch of C files, and you can try to compile them from almost any platform. You only have to change maybe the the, the platform layer and the input layer. And well, OpenGL it's supported in most platforms today. And yeah, it's quite easy to be ported to a lot of platforms. Uh, actually, one of the platforms I'm more proud of is uh, HTML5. It's WebAssembly. <laughs> 
Which is great yes. because especially with the whole Flash going end of life at the end of this month, we need more silly internet games. So yeah, get on yeah, it, yeah. people. That's Make internet games. Yeah, that, completely agree. That's it. Um, and actually, uh, I, I will tell you more, uh, Monica. Actually, uh, Riley compiled to what web assembly is very, very small. The full library would go down to less than one megabyte. And once link it with some with, with some for some game, uh, you can get uh, WebAssembly files under 500 kilobytes. So that's yeah. kind, kind of crazy running in, in client side uh, with hardware acceleration. Well, I, I actually, I'm, I'm very happy with what I've seen about WebAssembly today. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a side of the library that I want to explore way more. All, all the tools that I've published work in the web right now. But I think there is a lot, a lot of potential in that side. Um, I, I, would, I would like to work more on that side. Yeah, is there, uh, has there been a lot of interest from the community in exploring that too? Uh, I've seen that a lot of people that create uh, things with Riley uh, try to compile them for, for web. That's so, very awesome. I might have to you, check you, out you your Discord. To, yeah, by, by the way, uh, Monica, you, co you code once and the same code can be compiled to any of those platforms. You don't need to do any change to the code. That's awesome. I, and I really can't wait to see a little demo of kind of how this works. So speaking yeah. of, and so you've got all these platforms, but it looks like you support, you have bindings for a really yeah. big selection of languages too. I, I, yeah, that's it. Actually, uh, most of the binding, bindings, well, uh, all, almost all bindings have been created by the amazing community behind Riley. And here is the current list. I think it's updated at this point. From time to time, I check if I find some other new binding. But right now, there are more than 50 uh, different language bindings. Even there are language, uh, languages that have several bindings, mm -hmm. like PHP or Lua. Lua has lots of bindings. A lot of bindings there. Go, B. Wow, it, it, it's quite crazy, actually. I'm still impressed that there's a binding for COBOL, so. Yeah, well, actually, that's a code example. Yeah, someone created it. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> <So we're great. laughs> yeah. And actually, it, it's not listed here, but I also had a similar binding uh, for uh, fast assembly. I think it's called fast assembly, that it's uh, an, an assembly uh, version. And it was consuming the DLL the, directly, the, the dynamic library. And yeah, it was calling the functions uh, from assembly. That's it. It was filling the registers with the input, getting the output in another register, uh, and, and calling the function from assembly. It was kind of, wow. <laughs> wow. And it's just great to see that you've got a community that if there isn't a binding in a language they want, that they just feel empowered to go and make that. So that is really great. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's it's amazing. Actually, you you also have bindings for some new languages like uh, Odin or, or C that are yeah, uh, saying I saying I haven't heard of half of these. So <laughs> <laughs> well, Odin and Seek are are two new languages that really look great. And um, yeah, they already have bindings. So Riley already has binding to those languages. And I, I'm not sure if they are already uh, in a complete stable uh, version yet, but they already have bindings. And I, actually, there is even a binding for J that the language, it's, uh, it's the Jonathan Blow language, has not even been published yet. Um, <laughs> it, 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 there is already a binding. <laughs> but when it does get published, people can, will, people will be able to use your tool. So, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, that, those, those things 
are it, are so amazing that yeah. I I cannot even believe that th this this weekend project that actually just intended to be a weekend project for my students would become this something this big. So yeah. that that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, but for me that's 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 incredible. Yeah, so um, would you want to maybe share sh us kind of how this works? Like how if somebody is watching this and goes, wow, I really want to try this out. Um, kind of how, um, how, would they, yeah. how would they do that? Okay. Um, yeah, well, first, I, how, how, how to install the, the library is very easy. If, uh, if you have some experience dealing with, with libraries and, and open source software, uh, probably you will go on to go directly to the GitHub repository mm -hmm. where you got, you can just fork the library or just clone it. Um, yeah, here you got the description of the library, the build, installation details, everything is kind of configured to be easy to build the library and use the library. Even you have the different contact uh, information web pages. Yeah. But if it's the case that, for example, you are a student that has not that much experience with mm -hmm. coding and just want to start in an easy way. And if you have tried other libraries and you get lost into trying to configure a, a, an environment for for it, or you have that kind of problems that actually my students had all the time, and that's the reason of where I live, mm -hmm. you got uh, already set up a installer for Windows that you can just download here for free. Take me to the download. So you can choose two flavors with the GCC compiler for Windows or even the TCC compiler that is the tiny C compiler. And mm -hmm. just hit just download. Download it. Well, it's going to take, oh no, actually it's downloading quite fast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, which I think is but, always a good thing to think about the beginners in our community because I know for most of us we've gotten fairly comfortable with Git and so we're comfortable going to GitHub and just either forking or cl or cloning. But there's people who would be like if we told them it's like, "Oh, this is how you do it." They would be like, "Wait, what?" So having an easy option for them is good. Yeah. I, I, I think so. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the reason of that installer. Actually, I tried to round it. I already got the install. Well, that's, uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's typical. Um, okay, you round the installer. It's the mini PCC version. Actually, well, it's, uh, you are seeing it very mm -hmm. small due to the the high DPI, but it just next, next <laughs> install. It will take. Well, it's a couple of uh, one minute or something like that. I, okay. Well, actually, let me try because it's been. Uh, is it working? <gasps> oh, but I, okay. I got. Okay. No, no worries. Cause I, I got the notepad already open, prepared. Okay. Then, so. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, okay. I, I, wait, wait. I, I can do. I can do that. Okay. I just will just close. I install. There we go. Mm, there we go. Uh, I have to say that now it's executing in a, a Surface Pro 3 that it's like 10 years old. So <laughs> it's a quite, quite old computer, but well, okay. We'll leave it installing here. Mm -hmm. So okay, now I don't know if I cancel, I will break the installation. Okay. Let's let me cancel. Now maybe the... I broke the installation. Oh no! So, oh, let me, if everything went right when you do that, mm -hmm. and you open Notepad plus plus, actually you get that. Okay, you get perfect. The, you it better, and you get a simple example, and it tells you press F say F six to run Riley. So you press. You got here the script. 
you compile, you run, and ta-da! And you created your free, your first, first point graphic in application. Dome. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. it's like five mouse clicks and two K presses, and you are done. That's pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, and so all this is running just in Notepad plus plus. That's yeah. So you people don't that. people don't have to. I mean, we all kind of so we all have our IDEs of choice, but it's nice to know people can also start on a fairly basic one too. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's it. Actually, the installer is pretty configured to work with Notepad plus plus because I think it's a very simple and easy to use text editor because mm -hmm. one one problem that I frequently actually I am still see today I frequently see with the students is that uh, in the university sometimes they start directly with an environment like Visual Studio and everything is so there is no they they actually don't know what's happening in the background mm -hmm. they start they just press the uh, the green boot the, the green button to run it, or just, they just create a new solution, a new project. And if in that process something goes wrong, that uh, spoiler always there is something that goes wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. Then they feel completely lost, like oh, what's happening? It's not compiling. It's not it's not working. Uh, my project is broken. What means those files that are generated in that folder? Where is my executable? Uh, well, there are lots of problems. So, uh, with what I live, I try to go to the to a lower level and try to show show things in a in a raw way. You know, like you are compiling in the command line using a compiler that. Well, actually processes the file, processes the data, well, all, all the compilation processes. And it's that simple as you generate an executable and then you uh, execute that, that executable file. So, yeah, I, I tried to find a kind of a balance mm -hmm. between simplicity, but at the same time, low level coding you know mm -hmm. and that habit, the, that was my intention with with relip and yeah and actually i think it could work uh, pretty pretty well yeah and it seems like it's it's doing a really good job of teaching teaching the people who use it here are the fundamental principles here and so it's not you know it's not it's not quite click and go but you're going to learn what exactly this is doing and how and how to really fix things when they go wrong and so it's like it seems like kind of like in education where like where you're learning math you start out doing it all kind of on p paper and then you start going to the calculators once you know what the fundamental principles are so that so that really it's kind of the it's kind of the same vibe that I'm get, 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 that I'm getting here so well yeah that, that, that was the intention actually I, I actually right now I've only seen a uh, really use um, mostly for video games uh, programming teaching or, or a small application or maybe I also seen the university some people using for uh, for a small tools that they create but actually i think that really could also be introduced in other subjects for example like math like physics mm -hmm. to illustrate uh, some of the theory that uh, sometimes you only see on paper with numbers Actually, last last week or two weeks ago, some of my students were telling me, "Oh, well, in the university now we are studying math, we are studying matrix, uh, matrix matrices, uh, and vectors, and we only see numbers. We only see numbers, and it's very difficult to us to understand why all that information is useful." Mm -hmm. So, 
using yeah. some programming, it's easy to just say, okay, then math is important, matrices is important, because in a 3D world, uh, you are calculating the projections, you are moving the objects. Uh, actually, you are uh, configure how to display information in the way you want to display. And it's all based on the math that now you are studying and you hardly understand how to use them. So that is yeah. great that it gets, I mean, as I remember oh, my Algebra 2 class when we got to Matrix my brain just shut down because I couldn't it was just this wall of numbers and I couldn't see kind of the tangible application of it but anything that can make that more relevant to students is oh my gosh it's fantastic so and also they get to make fun little video games at the same time so as cool as that first window was do you happen to have any other demos to to os here yeah sure uh well i i can show the demos in the web page directly but then i can compile some of them for example here the examples are organized by the, by, by different modules, like if they are use, use, using shapes or textures or text. Um, actually, they are compiled for web and they, they run in web life. For example, that's a small oh, wow. example to illustrate how an, an animation works. And you can see how every frame is mm-hmm. drawn one after the other to illustrate uh, an animation process. And, can do it faster and uh, you only you not only have the the demo running real time in the web but you also have here all the code all that the has code been there. to run with this demo and that, well that's example actually we have other, we even have <laughs> a paint program i really <laughs> that, that's a, a, a painting program that was just a very s- either very happy or very scary sun. I'm not quite sure which. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at painting with, with the mouse, but here... Oh, painting with a mouse is hard. So, no, you're... <laughs> yeah. It's good, and but if... You got, you got the idea. Yep. <laughs> so, that is... What a beautiful painting. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's got happy yeah. trees. It's very Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah, you got a very simple painting program, and actually, it's only like I think it was like two hundred lines of code. Two hundred lines of code. That's that's amazing. That but, really oh, is. Oh, something happened. Oh, <laughs> okay, I don't know what but happened. <laughs> you can even save the, the the photo. You can even download my amazing text. Oh. <laughs> so. My amazing texture painting. <laughs> oh, that's no, awesome. Yeah. yeah, well, there are actually right now, I think there are about uh, 120 examples available for Rayleigh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a lot of examples to explore and to see how things work. Oh. That, that's for the alpha blending. Okay, alpha blending here. Ooh, that's. Uh, that's uh, I'm really sorry. Fun. It's like it's shiny, bright, colorful things. I am instantly yeah. drawn <laughs> towards it. And, oh, oh, that that's also very cool. That's a bunny mark. Look at that! <laughs> wow. Well, we have almost uh, 20,000 20, bunnies jumping around in the screen, and we are usually over 30 frames per second so yeah it's quite it's quite amazing yeah and if you're making like a like a little kind of web sports game and you want a little crowd in the background you know cheering your little people on then (laughs) that is fantastic you can you can you can try with Riley. why not or even 
those are the kind of advanced example are uh, 3D. You can even do 3D. For example, that's a let's say okay, that's a first person camera. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a small map. Actually, if you check in the top right corner, the map mm -hmm. I'm work I'm the I'm the red dot. You oh my that? gosh, yeah. And actually the map has been generated from the black and white uh, image. So you can generate the map and you have a small well kind of game. Yeah. And that that's done actually with I think it's about 100 lines of code or less than that. So yeah, it's quite quite impressive actually. But actually this is a, a con um an example contributed by someone from the community. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a very beautiful one, and it's just a few lines of code. It was contributed by CodeCat here. Yeah? Example contributed by CodeCat, and yeah, it's it's quite beautiful actually. And it's it, oh, and that's yeah, incredibly like, short. Yeah, it's it's just like three four loops and some logic here for the colors and the movement and um, yeah it's super impressive actually. Yeah. i think super that people <laughs> oh i think that some of us have found a weekend project so yeah i, I hope so <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that that's it and also apart from the examples that i say as i said there is about 120 examples right now available you also have several games. Mm -hmm. They are it's everything open source. All those games are, are made in, in Global Game Jam, actually, by me. <laughs> I created mm -hmm. all those games in the Global Game Jam. And, oh no, those ones, the classic ones, are just like, uh, what are the snakes? Yeah, uh, especially for those uh, of us who grew up on the Ataris, so, which is yeah, pretty that, much no, what our games that, look that, like. And, you got the game here, but ooh, let's see. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> wow, I, I think I never did. Okay, okay. So <laughs> um, if, you, <laughs> if you click here, you go directly to the source code for that example. That it's quite organized and prepared to be understandable. It's about three hundred lines of code, and yeah, that's it. You got. All those all those games available with the source code, the source code to to be checked and maybe to use to be used as a template or a base for a more complex game. And um, well, I, I actually in the in the really Discord, mm -hmm. I saw uh, lots lots of amazing uh, games made by the community. I, I remember just a couple of days ago that I saw kind of a. Uh, a tic-tac-toe game that it has some twist that when you click on a inside a square of the tic-tac-toe another smaller tic-tac-toe oh <laughs> it went like two or three levels uh, of inception you know tic-tac-toe-ception yeah, yeah it was a tic-tac-toe inception that's it but it was quite amazing because if you were winning in the deeper levels of Inception, you keep you keep winning in the upper levels. So yeah, it, it, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> that is, wow! I am I am so going to be checking your Discord out once our talk is done <laughs> because it seems like people are really coming up with fun stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and um and I've also um. From I've also heard that it's not just um, it's not just the visuals of the games, but also you have set something for sound too. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So you, so you, so you, so you, you can add. Well, it, it's possible to to play module uh, the the old module uh, audios XM or mod files. But mm -hmm. you can also play MP3, OGG. Let me, for example, let's have a test. That's a small test with some fancy uh, color cycles here. It's a, it's a mod file. And uh, it's, it's easy actually. It's, you need audio device, you load music stream, play music stream, 
and and update the music you stream. Actually, you, you can pause it. Oh, I resisted it, I think. Okay, ne ne never mind. Actually, <laughs> one, one, <word. laughs> one interesting thing about uh, the, the audio module of Rayleigh mm -hmm. is that it can be used independently of Rayleigh. So imagine that you are doing some uh, game or some application you can you can use that module independently of really just to add audio to your application or to your game mm -hmm. or to your tool so it, it's completely it can work in a complete standalone mode and I, actually there are several modules in really that can work standalone i tried I, I i really put a lot of effort into trying to decouple uh, the different parts that create really to mm -hmm. allow other people to pick one of those parts if required and integrate in another engine or another tool or another application. That That is really great. So people don't, it's not just all bundled to, it's not all bundled together and you have to take everything. It's like if you just need this one tool, then that's yeah. all you have yeah. to use. Yeah, actually, let me check because here in the examples, there is mm -hmm. a special category of example that it's others, for example, that here you got a uh, audio standalone. Here is a small example that you are only using the audio device. Uh, actually, that's a command line uh, music player. Actually, mm -hmm. That's it. You only need the audio device, load the sounds, load the music. You go into a loop to mm -hmm. play in the music. And when you finish, you just close the audio device. And this small piece of code it's it's a command line uh, music player so from the command line you can just access the the audio device and and play music that's it okay that's awesome and <laughs> i think so for people doing command line games i think that, <laughs> that could be really fantastic yeah well probably not not many people today but oh <laughs> I think people watching this stream might know those people making games on the might know the people making games on the command line so <laughs> but it's just it's the creativity you can have and just that everything is open and how people are just building to this and using it in ways you never imagined when you start started this is just that's fantastic and that, and i think that's really some of the best of open source is when when it's used in exactly that way so what has been something that your communities made that besides all the awesome examples you've given that has just really made you go just wow well, actually, probably one of the projects that I'm, I'm following now, it was uh, Ichio Master Plan, I think mm -hmm. it's called. A master Plan, yeah. Master Plan, actually, it's done using a binding of Rayleigh, um, the Go binding, I think. And actually, oh. it's a tool to plan. It's kind what? of a tool list with you can just drag and drop images you can you can you have different boards you have a big to-do list that you can move around and you can uh, connect uh, you have the progress bar for every to do and you can even create maps just for reference actually it's you can uh, put text connecting actually it's a super amazing tool. <laughs> uh, Fight that bear. <laughs> I, I, I be, new task. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I've been following this tool for for a long time. Um, wow. Yeah. Every every time a new version come out, it come out. It's it's super impressive. And well, I I think it does not have the the, the fame it deserves actually because no, it's really, it... really nice. It really doesn't. That is like that is like a combination of making a game and a productivity tool 
And it's Nazis. just, yeah. Oh my gosh, I am, okay, well, I'm going to have fun with that. That <laughs> is, oh, nice. That, that's, that's very interesting. Actually, if I oh, can wow. uh, add to collections where I can check my collections, <laughs> my library, uh, view profile, it's my library, where is, maybe it's my library, because I got a collection around, okay, it's here, it's here, it's a collection of, uh, well, uh, some things I bought, but uh, things I rated, okay, made with Revit. I try to keep this collection updated mm -hmm. each year with things that I found that most of the time I'm not aware of what people is creating <laughs> and I try to find I, I, I try to find on Itzio uh, things made with Rayleigh and I try to keep a list with all those things and uh, look at that yeah. there are lots of, of things that those ones are made by me but that's a game actually that's also a very nice game Made, actually, it was originally made with Visual Basic, I think, and then ported to Rayleigh. And look at that. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, that kind of old school game. And yeah. Yeah. You know, yep. But I know it, it, it feels nice. like we're all kind of nostalgic for those kind of old games. And now it's like we know how to make them or we're learning how. So That's it's, it. yeah, that is That's fantastic. It. And Itch.io has been, um, it's been a really fun place to get, to get games from. So that is, oh my yeah. gosh, that is, that is pretty amazing. Let, let, let me see if I have, uh, here is the master plan. Oh, the cute exporter. It's a tool to export the hmm. different layers of PSD. Oh, here are, oh, that one, uh, that's a new <laughs> one, but actually it's super impressive also, that, oh no, where is it, no, that's not, where is it, okay, here, that was from some kind of game jam, the, the, yeah, the ZGA jam, mm -hmm. and that one created with really uh, a CGA uh, 3D game, so it's kind of uh, <laughs> a with the past and the future. And wow! Look, look at that. I don't know if it, is it playing. Yep. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> yep. It's, well, quality probably it's quite bad due due to my connection, but look at that. That is. Oh my gosh! It's, it's so old. School. It's so weird because it's, it's, yeah. it, you're I, right, it's that I, I, mashup I of the it. old and new. Oh my gosh. I, I, I love this kind, this kind of examples actually, I love them. Well, here I try to compile them in, in a, in a list, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I probably am missing some of them because it's, it's not that easy. I also have in, in the Riley, in the Riley GitHub, now I, I enable the discussions, uh, mm -hmm. new feature of GitHub. Yes, we're all excited about and that. Here I got oh, an nice. open issue that it's made with Riley. So, uh, yeah, here people is sharing things they are doing with Riley. Look at that. Nice. More games. Look at the more examples. Obligatory fl fl happy bird. Look at that. Oh, wow. Here there is a small example. Yeah, that's super nice. Look at that. <laughs> Someone playing with physics. Well, master plan. Ma tool master plan, amazing. nice. A Tetris. Uh, another 2D game. A cute. Uh, There's a cute island. asset. Here there is some example of the completion for Relief, Lua Bindings in the studio. Okay, real time shader editor. Look at that. That's kind of a 3D card game or demo. Uh, 
uh, here playing with shadows, playing with shaders. Oh, look at that. Well, oh, that's oh, funny. simple that's blob really editor. Blog. Is this a blob editor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's but, cool. uh, yeah, but that texture the is great. Yeah, if, if that's it. Blob editor. What's a video? See? I actually can remember that it was really nice, this video. Let's see if it loads. Is it loading? No loading. Oh, and wow. The, the music was Oh, uh, here. Oh, okay. My computer is not. It's a, but thankfully, hopefully we'll go. Hopefully we'll go and add these links. So. It's an editor. That's okay. Yeah, that's just written yeah, in D. And that's actually that's in, in Korean, I think. And it looks mm -hmm. great also. Yeah. Yeah, that's a punk. Okay, well, uh, you, you see kind of what people is doing right now with Relief. People have made so, some yeah. fantastic things. Yeah. And so thankfully, and so definitely if you go to the website, which is just rylib.com, you have links to you. GitHub, you have links to the community, community and so hopefully after people watch this video they will start playing with this themselves and hopefully start making some fantastic things so yeah i hope so <laughs> i hope so too and i do know before because we've got about 10 minutes left that okay. we did say we were going to talk about olive oil <gasps> and we haven't talked oh, about okay. olive oil yet and so i love okay. the yeah. fact that not only do you open source your game development but you open source your food which is fantastic so tell us how how do you do this because i am just really envious of someone who gets to have their own olive oil that they you know pick the olives so tell us yeah. how, how did you start and how and what is the process like well i i i i, I got a small piece of land in my hometown mm -hmm. where I, I i got um uh, olive trees actually um yeah actually i try to care take care of them and once a year i go there to pick up the olives but actually it's i would say it's not fun but it's kind of fun <laughs> actually <laughs> probably it's different good. from your work with rylib and teaching yeah, I, actually, it's really hard work because I, I only have like three, four days a year to go there and to do that. And in that time, I have to get the minimum amount of olives required by the meal to be able to uh, to, to create the, the olive oil, to make the olive oil. And it's kind of a stressful because picking up the olives, it's a kind of a slow process. And mm -hmm. it takes a lot, a lot of work. Uh, you have to keep um, sowing the, the branches, uh, taking out the olives. I, I, I would say one by one, kind of, but it's, it, it, it's a really lot of work. And you keep getting uh, one kilogram after one kilogram after one kilogram to take that to the mill. And actually for every, Mm, like 10 kilograms of, of, of uh, olives, you can get maybe one liter and a half of olive oil, high enough. So yeah, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, mm -hmm. but uh, at the end, uh, you are, some years I arrived to the limit, some years I can't, those years are a bit sad, but yeah. in the last year, I I've, I've managed to get the the minimum quantity of the year. This year, I got the, the minimum quantity. Uh, actually, today, still all my bonds uh, are 
No. Baking. Baking, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I'm waiting for this weekend, uh, for next weekend to just uh, try to relax a bit because last weekend I, I was working on that and wow, it, it was quite hard. But at the end I was able to take the olives to the mill and to uh, make the olive oil. And when you do all the effort and then you got the olive oil and you just try it with some toast or with some with mm. some uh, food with some vegetables actually it's amazing <laughs> so yeah. it's amazing it's priceless actually it's yeah. priceless and it's oh um no, yes. so, uh, sorry go ahead no I, I was going to say that uh, if you measure the the benefits of doing that in terms of the time, the money you have to put, the process and everything. Uh, actually, so, someone commented that on, on Twitter the other day that I, I posted a, a photo. It's that kind of things that it's always uh, easier and cheaper to just go to the store and, and buy it. That's, that's a reality. But the experience of doing that and knowing that you are getting your own olive oil and having that at the same moment that you have done it and being able to try it with no weight when the, when the olive oil is still green because mm -hmm. when it's really just uh, squashed is is green it's not uh, yellow it becomes yellow at, after like three four weeks it becomes completely yellow and transparent but once made it just pure green and mm -hmm. it's not transparent at all and it has a very very acid uh, flavor well that that's priceless that's yeah that's and i think it's you know it's the parallels to open source are just so striking because it is more work um and it is a lot of effort and it takes longer but that those intangible benefits though of knowing that you've done this yourself and who knows who this might you know and you're not only benefiting you but then that person at the mill then it benefits them and then if someone else goes oh i want to try this and it just you never know kind of how what kind of reaction that's going to spark and i think it's been interesting to see a lot of people into open source who are trying now to kind of take that approach to their food too I, 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 actually monica i would say that uh, that's at the end it's about a uh, patient mm -hmm. you know it's that you are doing something with patient that it's over uh, other more material uh, points than just uh, you, you're putting a piece of your life in what in what you are doing and yeah. you don't care about uh, any economic benefit or any other uh, points that are usually key for for example for a company mm -hmm. uh, you're doing that for patient that's and, and and that's it yeah, it's it's patience and it it and it really is a kind of love. So, yeah, that is a perfect place to end. So I want to thank everyone who has been watching on our stream and everyone who will watch this afterwards. Thank you. And Ray, thank you so much for being a fantastic guest. So if you are watching um, just after this has been recorded be sure to follow imic foss on twitter for amazing people like ray and all of our guests uh, and all of the guest curators that we have so thank you so much it was a pleasure to talk to you and i am lo looking forward to playing with rylib thank you very much monica thank all you right. also to all the imic foss uh, team for 
for the opportunity. That's it. All right. Thank Wonderful. Well, thank you. Bye.